So, wir sind hier jetzt am Stand, in der Business Area am Stand von Tain Chambers, sind die Entwickler von GTFO. Das ist ein Hardcore-Coop-Shooter, der hat eine ordentliche äh, Fanbase und wird sehr gerne gespielt und ist auch irgendwie komischerweise das Highlight der Messe aktuell, weil dort am Stand ist ständig was los, ist jedes Mal total crowded. So, und gleich sind wir dabei, mit den Entwicklern zu sprechen und mal sehen, was sie uns hier erzählen zu GTFO selbst, zu ihren Plänen für die Zukunft. Und es soll ja, ich habe so am Rande gehört, soll ein neues Spiel in Planung sein von den Machern von GTFO. Mal gucken, was sie uns zur Zukunft nochmal erzählen. What are the two most important factors that contribute to the game popularity, like right now? The game itself is designed around control. Right, so you lose the rate gain control. You have to claw it back, or you're like, oh, let's not, uh, uh, this is happening, you know. So all the mechanics are about control, but also, of course, it's a cooperative game. And uh, to regain control, you have to work together, right? Yeah. That's why we have the yeah. work together, die together, together, together yeah. yeah. And that is true also. I would say it's a very consistent game. Like it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. My initial vision of the game, it's very close to at least the emotional experience. It has like its downsides. It has its like, oh, they're sneaking for two hours. Like yeah. that, that's insane, right? But. Uh, it's a game that should remain what it is. We're not, we don't want to water it down. What are well, the most important weaknesses of the game that you aiming to improve? Yeah, well, it has big uh, weaknesses by the sun, right? It, it is a super niche game, but we don't want to improve that aspect of it. We want to keep it exactly. But still, by intent, to yeah, it's designed that way. Yeah, it can be kept like that. Because then you're getting what you, you know, it is cons consistently doing what it's supposed to do. Anything you want to do to improve like the new player experience, yeah. like to make it more attractive for, for, for new players? Especially for new players? Well, you know, there's a magical thing that happens. And if you make GTFO mm -hmm. more smooth, you lose a lot of that magic, you know. If you're four players and you walk into that darkness not knowing anything, it's perfect. You have to love it. Yeah, and then GTFO is actually not really for me. I just, I like, I like designing it, making it, and so forth. But I can't stand the stress. The weakness and its strength is sort of the same for me in this yeah. case, right? So if you make it like, oh, you make it easier, then you lose that magical thing. Yeah. That is GTFO yeah. to me. I know a lot of players, they say like, hey, I have to go to Discord and actually get in touch with some bets so I can finish one run though, because with my friends, I can't do it, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. But the experience of going to Discord and finding these guys that will help you in there, mm -hmm. it's awesome. There are no plans for an easy mode and uh, you don't want to make it like, more attractive for new players. No. Just leave it the way it is. You know, it's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be. But, but it's a different experience. Okay. Yeah. Just in your own words, in your own opinion, what makes it niche? If you break it down to like uh, mechanical things, I would argue GTFO is really good at a thing where it's it feels like or and it is up to you rather than you having like a, a random wave of enemies coming in or a problem that feels impossible because you did something wrong. GTFO is a game where you can sort of turn turn it around at any point. You can always make it. But this is uh this is sort of the drama roller coaster, you know. And if you mess up it's Temporary, you can solve it. it. It's it's a lot about that social thing. Uh, it's a relationship builder and destroyer. How about console versions? The problem for us has been to, that we're constantly updating and we're constantly fixing and patching. Yeah. And, I mean, if at some point you feel like we can make make it good enough on console, it might be interesting. Yeah, we're never gonna just do it for for the sake, basically. Sure. What's plan for the near future? For GTFO? Or? Yeah, no for GTFO. Right, okay. Okay. We're gonna change the way we deliver things. Okay. Change the way where the focus lies in from like just adding new things and fixing stuff to more storytelling driven things. And also okay. going back and looking at these old yeah. uh, things. Uh, it's also part of the whole, the complete story. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's gonna happen now with the storyline is basically old things will start to start to circulate again. So imagine like alternate versions of old things. So new gamers will get to play those, but yeah. if you play GTFO, that's an, also a new challenge, right? Considering how crazy they are, you should probably think like, uh, you know, when it ends, you can't play it anymore. There's some weird shit. We'll see. What are the plans after GTFO? There are certain games that we that we really want to do. 
and there are things that we want to get back to. But for me, one of my bigger passions is uh, heisting leagues. So uh, moving back to like doing a heist cooperative FPS, uh, in, the, in a sense of like a payday follow-up. Yeah. But not really payday, but feels like payday has, for me, design-wise, become stale. With all of the things that we learned from GTFO and a lot of other good, good games, see, there are a lot of stuff that could be done to make a better heist experience. So yeah, cooperative heist FPS, and but it has a uh, techno thriller twist. It's a, okay. So if you think about all of these, you know, all the books that like Cyberpunk is sort of getting inspired from and all of these movies. So we're doing a lot of like combinations of things that where we can see the gameplay really like getting crazy, right? If I may ask, is it already in works or just for Absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, so the, uh, we were eight, now we're 88. Uh, we're gonna move up to about a hundred, I would estimate. Originally, like 10 chambers is named because I basically said like if we're 11 I quit. <laughs> okay. So then, now I have to eat my own words a bit. That 88 has been working on GTA, mm -hmm. which makes no sense. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a really super niche game with a massive thing, you know, that has been scaling up. Okay. But it's been a lot of training, a lot of like thought process of, of creating a nice culture. Of this. Yeah. So if you're already working on it, when do we when are we going to hear or to see something about it? Yeah, well that that's the thing, right? A lot of people nowadays they promise a lot like oh the release date over here and it's all this and no 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 we feel more like you know we're gonna do it when we're ready it's not gonna be your like you know complete development and then one like oh now it's coming it's, it's gonna be a, a ramp up it's, uh, something that has sort of been been a topic is like player counts simple stuff like that we avoid uh overworld stuff basically because it's such a like there's a long distance to the next game, and we just want it faster. Yeah. I love both the world games, but it's not for this experience. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a long way again, so you need to basically stick to the early access again, and then with the that is highly likely. Yeah. We we really enjoy that experience. You know? okay. We enjoy like to say, okay, this piece of it is ready, and we're ready to have feedback in this piece. If it's not top secret, how, how long have you been working on it on the new project now? I would say, I mean, it depends on the scale. Uh, I would say about two years, but it's a lot of design work and a lot of you know, yeah, sure. wrapping up. Still, yeah. thank you for your time. Thanks thank you for having us here. Thank you.